In this clip, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of a financial instrument. Now, if we look at the surplus economic units, um, when they've provided funds to a deficit unit or to one of these financial institutions, they want some kind of proof that they're going to receive their money back sometime in the future. So they need a contract which promises them that they're going to receive their money back in the future. And that contract is called a financial instrument. So a financial instrument would be issued by a deficit unit or by one of these financial institutions to the surplus economic unit who provide the funds to promise them that they will receive some kind of payment in the future. Right, so that's a financial instrument. Now, if you hold a financial instrument, if an economic unit has a financial instrument, sometimes it may want to sell that financial instrument. Maybe it needs funds now. And therefore, we have markets for financial instruments. That is where these financial instruments will be traded. That enables the surplus units who hold the financial instruments or who had bought the financial instruments previously to trade the financial instruments. And therefore, this provides, the markets provide liquidity of these financial instruments. So this is another important function of the financial sector. It provides liquidity to the holders of financial instruments. When you hold such a financial instrument, you also want to know at which price you will be able to sell it or what the value of that instrument is. And that is also facilitated by the market. People who hold financial instruments and who want to sell those instruments and also deficit units who want to sell instruments will be the supplier of financial instruments. So that will create a supply of financial instruments. Whereas the surplus units who want to buy financial instruments will create a demand for financial instruments. And as you were taught in Economics 1, when you have the forces of demand and supply, you can determine a price. So another important function of the financial sector and of financial markets is price discovery. It enables you to know but what the value of your financial instrument that you hold is. Right. Now, these financial instruments will be traded in different markets. An important market that you will learn about is the money market. Now, in the money market, short-term financial instruments will be traded, and you will learn about these, the, the money market and the functions of the financial market, of the money market, um, and about all the different instruments that are traded in the money market. Then there's also the bonds market where longer-term financial instruments will be traded. Um, there is the share market, where shares in companies are traded. Then, if you hold a financial instrument, you will not be sure, even though the market will help you to discover the price, you will not be sure what the price will be in the future. And that creates a risk. Now, sometimes an economic unit that holds such an instrument will want to limit that risk. And therefore, there exists another market which we call the derivatives market. And the purpose of the derivatives market is to trade risk. So that's another important function of the financial system. Right, and then there are three other markets that we will also cover in this course, but to a less extent, not to say that they are less important, 
there's just not space to cover everything. Um, we also look at the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is the market where currencies of different countries are traded for each other. Then we will look briefly at the commodities market. In the commodities market, large quantities of commodities such as mealies or wood or any other type of commodity can be traded. And then another important market which we will look at is the credit market where um, credit, in other words, loans are pulled together and then traded. Um, and we can look at the credit markets because they were an important reason for the start of the financial crisis that started around about the end of 2007. Right, so those are the different markets that we will look at in this course. In the next video clip, Adil is going to explain to you in which study unit you are going to look at all these com different components of the financial sector.